you never know how bad you felt until you start feeling good. I think people are fooling themselves uh, into thinking that it's cheaper to eat junk. Between the fast food and the carry out and all the prepared foods, and then the fact that you're hungry a lot more often, and all the snacks too. Cost wise, even with the price of beef and things like that, our doctor was supportive. I think he was glad to see positive results. I didn't come out and actually use, you know, the tabooed word of keto or carnivore. He saw the results. You could almost see the look on his face. He realized, okay, this guy has done a little research. He knows enough about what he's talking about that I can't just discount it. Okay. Good morning, everyone. We have uh, our special guest today is Greg, who's going to be sharing uh, I guess a success story with us. Greg, welcome. Where are you located? I am in Northern Indiana, about uh, 30 miles east of the University of Notre Dame. 30 miles east of Notre Dame. Okay. I lived yeah, in, yeah. Uh, I think, I think, uh, yeah, because I lived up in Northwest Indiana when I was a kid up near uh, Hammond, Gary. Uh, yeah. A little town called Dyer, Indiana, actually, for anybody who's familiar with that area, but it's basically Chicago. It's just kind of <laughs> where Chicago right. spilled over into Indiana at this point. So, well, thank you for doing this. Appreciate it. How's the weather up there these days? Pretty is it pretty nice or still pretty chilly? Well, you know, Indiana weather right now is uh, you know, a few days ago we had winter. Mm -hmm. Uh today we have spring and no in Indiana. Next week we'll be in the 80 degree. You know, it changes by the day. So yeah, we just yeah. roll with the punches. Got it, got it. Okay. Well, let's let's get into a little bit of your story. So tell us a little bit about your background, what you know, I guess where you were before you started your health journey and, and we'll go from there. Yeah, I, uh, well, I grew up an athlete. I uh, played basketball through high school. Uh, I'm six, three, not quite as uh, mm -hmm. tall as you are, uh, but uh, you know, I was, I was an athlete, um, played basketball, uh, tennis. And then um, as a senior, I got into long distance running kind of on my own. Spent a lot of time through college doing that, never as part of the organizational team, as part of the university, even though I ran with them uh, and really got into that. Uh, so was really, really active uh, in my younger years. And then uh, getting out of college, uh, our family, uh, my dad and so on, we competed professionally in uh, professional hydroplane racing. Hmm. So uh, we traveled all over the country doing that which uh, it kind of extended the need for me to, um, you know, stay fit because uh, it was kind of a, even though there were sprint races, they were physically taxing. So I continued on the distance running being six, three, uh, I was really lean uh, throughout my, even into my early thirties um, simply because, you know, weight was everything in racing. And so um, you had to stay fit, stay light to be competitive. And so I had that motivation to keep me going. Once we got out of that and I had a young family, uh, you know, the dangers of that kind of made the decision for me to get out of that and do that. But then uh, consequently, um, you know, a lot of that activity started dissipating over the years. And then my degree in college was in computer science. So I've actually been in the IT industry for 40 years. So that's an extremely sedentary mm -hmm. occupation. So over the years of just doing that, I think uh, probably starting early mid thirties through 50 years old or so, was probably when I experienced most of my weight gain just as a result, you know, all the office uh, treats and all the, the uh, lifestyle in general, you know, it's, it wasn't, it wasn't 150 pounds in a year. It was, you know, five to 10 pounds a year over the course of, you know, 15, 20 years. Okay. So how, how heavy did you get up to? My my peak weight was three ninety seven. Okay, that's, that's up um, there. So yeah, so <laughs> you couldn't, as, you couldn't as get to four hundred, man. You couldn't make it to four hundred. <laughs> you know, I, I think the three ninety seven was such a shock, yeah. and the fact that it was three pounds away. In fact, I, for a long time, I didn't know how much I weighed because the scale we had maxed out at three fifty, wow. and so we kind of upgraded to one of these digital scales where you step on it and it tells you everything there is to know about you know your health and all this kind of stuff and. 
And we, when we upgraded the max on it was 400 pounds, which, which scared me even more because I got on that and I was only three pounds away from not being able to use that thing. See, I so, gotta tell you how competitive I am. I, I would have probably like chugged a big old, you know, half gallon of water and hop back under. So I say I'd hit over 400. I mean, when I went yeah. over 300, I was like, I was close to 300. I was like, I'm going to be over 300. And I, I ate a bunch and jumped back on the scale. <laughs> <laughs> well, the traumatic eff- effect of 397 wasn't far off from 400. Got so, it, got it. Okay. Uh, so, so it, it, uh, it served its purpose, I guess. Did you grow up playing sports in Indiana too, or where, where were you from? Where it, it? Yeah, I, I I grew up my whole life uh, Northern Indiana. Got it. Got it yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah I was Midwest. A, I was a kid playing bas- high school basketball in Indiana. Our coach was a big Bobby Knight disciple, which means he was mean as hell, you know, and <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> make us run to well, death. Back, yeah. <laughs> well, back in that day, in those days, you know, all the coaches were mean as hell. I yeah, mean, it wasn't, yeah. you know, that was just the, uh, the way that was. was the rule. Yeah, that sure. was the rule. Yeah. Okay. So you're at 397 pounds. When was that? What year was that? About. 2018 2019 so not that long uh, ago okay when i actually realized that 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 had become a and oddly enough uh you know since 2018 i have actually been employed by a pharmaceutical company so we specialize in over-the-counter self-care medication so we're not involved in rx but uh you know so we're the I guess, you know, we're, we're not the evil ones, you know, we're the, we're the ones that try to make this medication a little more affordable for people. But nonetheless, I always felt it was ironic because of all the things you, you know, it's certainly uh pharmaceutical industry is vilified quite a bit, but, um, but it was ironic. Uh, so I was again, still working in the IT field, you know, sedentary. I, I was actually working remote a lot. So this was even before, before COVID. Okay. Um, and it actually, even though I kind of realized that my peak weight was in what, you know, 2018, 2019, um, we really didn't actively get started doing anything full time uh, with full effort until January of 2020. Got it. Okay. Let me just before we get into what you did. Mm-hmm. You know, effectively 400 pounds. I mean, what was going on? I mean, I mean, I'm sure there was other things: like sleep apnea, hypertension, oh. pre-diabetes, diabe- I don't know what else is going on with you. Yeah, I, uh, I, I was holding a full poker hand when it come to that stuff. I had, uh, you know, the blood pressure was 135 over 95, and that was with meds. Mm-hmm. Um, A1C, A1C was never high by, you know, kind of what we're getting sold today mm-hmm. but uh it was between five seven and six okay. so, pre, pre, um, so pre, was, pre-diabetic would be would be fair okay yeah yeah and uh and sleep apnea mm-hmm. so i have a sister that's involved in sleep study programs and that so she said oh yeah we got to get you on cpap and get you uh, something there um, so i was you know on that anxiety problems just just general social you know situational ac- anxiety I spoke at national conferences for the IT related industry. So, you know, that just made things worse sometimes, you know, and all of those things, I think that's why they say the, you know, blood pressure is kind of the silent uh, killer, you know, where you, you have it, but you don't feel like you really have anything that's that major. I think the thing that probably got to me the most was the gout, actually the gout flare ups that I had, I was having so many gout flare ups that, after I would kind of heal and one would get, you know, uh, go to its conclusion, it it was within a week or two and I'd I'd have another one. Mm. So it was almost continuous in various, you know, whether it was my ankles, my feet or my knees or whatever. Yeah. That's no fun. I know gout can be very extremely, extremely painful. Um, so diet back in those days, just standard American junk. Were you on any kind of, any kind of thing? I mean, surely it was just, you know, I mean, of course the meat was the one that was making you overweight and killing you. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. But, right. Um, yeah. What, well, what were you eating back then? Okay. Well, early on, what was funny is my background, as far as the, the uh, you know, food and the, and that, I was, since I was running in, in that time era, the, a, a doctor that was really being pushed at that time was Dr. Nathan Pritikin. Mm-hmm. And so Pritikin was no fat. It right. wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't low fat. It was no fat. So anything, but it was all kinds of carbs and all kinds of stuff. Well, while I was running 125 miles a week, distance running, it wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah. Um, and so some of that past practice kind of rolled over into what, you know, kind of got me to where I ended up being 397. 
And, and then, you know, we, we tried, you know, different diet programs. I think I yo-yoed like 30, I lost the same 30, 40 pounds, probably about 10 years or 10 times in that period of time that got me to kind of where I was. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. I think if I'm not mistaken, I think Nathan Pritikin ended up uh, killing himself. I, mean, I don't know what happened with him, but I think he ended up committing suicide. Uh, I don't know, maybe the diet, you know, I mean, we see, we see that low fat diet. I mean, we see the low cholesterol is associated with, suicide and all that stuff so it's kind of a sad sort of conclusion to his life but um so you're at 397 pounds 2018 you just kind of like okay and and, and you know finally in 2020 you decide hey i'm gonna do something about it uh what prompted you to, to finally say hey, i'm gonna change things what was what was the, what was the final straw well i had a uh so i was working remote but i also had a kind of a, a an apartment on the side closer to our corporate office. And so I was spending a lot of time, you know, without the wife, she was back home and I was up in an apartment by myself. So I spent a lot of time, you know, on YouTube and, and mm -hmm. getting information. And one of the, the kind of the trends or the things that I saw kind of emerging in the YouTube space was the whole idea of this keto diet. Mm -hmm. And uh, my early resources, again, I'm an IT guy. I'm a fact-based science kind of a, you know, guy. And so early on, I listened to, you know, Jeff Volick and Dr. Stephen Finney, um, Dr. Jason Fung, uh, you know, early on, you know, we did some fasting, but a lot of that was just kind of gathering information. And I was always kind of digesting it, but never really had made the commitment to say, hey, this was for us. and We were going to give it a full fledged try. I think I did try it a couple of times prior to 20 January of 2020, but I wasn't really fully vested in it. I was just seeing it, like maybe how I felt. I probably didn't try it long enough to really see the results that are typical. Um, but nonetheless, I was just gaining that information. And, and again, medically sound foundational information is what I was preferring to get at that time. And well, those were, ended up being some pretty good resources. Okay. Okay. So yeah, there's, there's some people out there and it, it is kind of interesting that a lot of people are, you know, stepping outside their doctor's office for, for health advice, which I think is, you know, as someone who is out there in that space, I think we can help a lot of people that way because a lot of the physicians are not particularly well suited for providing lifestyle and nutrition advice. They just don't know. And so, so you're just Googling it, you know, you're, you're watching the YouTube videos, uh, it sort of makes sense. Um, you go away from the low fat approach. So do you, do you start out with a ketogenic diet or fasting or where, where do you go? Yeah, I started out in January, 2020, which is purely coincidental to the, uh, timing of the plague. I mean, mm -hmm. it was, yeah. it was all, you know, it was, it just happened to be that we started this, you know, a couple months before that all hit. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, we, we started with keto and, and it wasn't long after that, then I was starting to really shift my resources to more Dr. Westman uh, was probably that bridge resource. Um, and, you know, he, he preached the, you know, obviously the whole foods and, and, and trying to uh, do what's right there. Um, so we focused on that. We, we, because some of the resource that I had was Jason Fung. Uh, I did, we did do a little more fasting. I did do a, seven day water fast once um typically it was you know two to three days and i was probably doing one of those once a month mm -hmm. so it was keto and fasting at that time um and and, and very and we were very successful with that mm -hmm. um, we probably of the 140 pounds or so that i lost have lost probably lost about 80 80 to 90 pounds during that uh yeah. six to ten month period Sure. That's awesome. That's fair enough. And, and I mean, I imagine you started feeling better fairly quickly, I would imagine, right? Yeah, actually. Um, it, yeah. It, I think when more of the weight came off was when I saw more of the results with the, with the blood pressure, the A1C, the first time it was checked, you know, after even keto, it had gone from, you know, five, eight or whatever it was down to about five, two. Um, so, you know, there, there was that. The, the blood pressure was already starting to come down. Obviously, that was probably coming down because of the weight loss and things like that. But the one thing that we that kind of we noticed after a couple months, a few months, was the gout flare-ups. Even that early on had kind of dwindled down to maybe one week every few months. 
even that early in the process. Yeah, that's that's and that's got to be a relief. That, that kind oh, of oh yeah, that's extremely <laughs> painful there. So, okay, so you're losing weight. I mean, was it, were there any uh, healthcare providers involved during any of this? I mean, did you go to the doctor at some point to checkups and things like that. Yeah, and on the heels of that's when we kind of shifted more to ketovore, and uh, you know, and that's when we you know started listening more to Doctor Barry and yourself. As far as my interaction with the doctor. Our doctor was supportive. I think he was uh, glad to see positive results. The other thing is I went in and, and kind of some of the, uh, you know, user testimonials that I'd seen on YouTube said, you know, go to the doctor being knowledgeable and, and kind of know what you're talking about. And you tend to get a little less pushback. And I think that's kind of where my doctor was. I didn't come out and actually use, you know, the, the tabooed word of keto or carnivore at that point. Um, I just, he saw the results. Um, mm -hmm. I started talking about, you know, cholesterol and, and HDL and LDL and the different particle sizes of LDL and things like that. And I think you could almost see the look on his face. He realized, okay, this guy has done a little research. He knows enough about what he's talking about that I can't just discount it. And, and so he, he really has been, you know, pretty supportive. Okay. Results oriented. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I mean, guess. you know, at the end of the day, I mean, hopefully you, you, you look at the results in front of you and say, well, this is clearly better. I mean, you know, if you're going from 400 to 320 ish or whatever it was in the first, you know, 10 months, then, then that's mm -hmm. clearly an improvement. Uh, you said you went to a keto vor, which I hear that term a lot. You know, I mean, I, I mean, that's, I guess, how do you define that? I mean, it's, it's like a carnivore ketogenic diet. I mean, how do you, how do you do that? Yeah. I mean, I mean, since for the last six to nine months, I've probably been for all uh, intents and purposes, uh, carnivore uh, with the exception of, you know, maybe some avocado once in a while, mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe a little, maybe a little bit of broccoli and cauliflower once in a while, you know, Brussels sprouts, things like that. But really my focus has been, you know, out of a, out of a typical week, you know, probably five to six days, I'm carnivore yeah, okay. um, at this point. And in fact, even probably more so carnivore now than, than, you know, ketovore. And what was it? What, so you started listening to Ken, Ken Barry and myself. Um, so that was, a sh that maybe made you want to do this a lot. You know, a lot of people go from keto to ketovore to carnivore and, you know, somewhere now they just eat a lot more meat. I mean, we're starting to, you know, find out that, at least a lot of people, myself included, think that meat is actually a health food and we shouldn't be avoiding it. We should be, we should be, you know, sort of prioritizing that. And so what difference did you note when you made that shift from, from regular keto and fasting to more of a, more of a meat focused uh, approach? Well, there was a couple different things. Um, you know, I, I had started hearing more about that. Hey, even, even some of those limited vegetables could be having an effect. Um, you know, I listened to Michaela Peterson and some of you know, her experience and things like that. And I thought, well, I mean, my, my conditions had improved quite a bit. Um, there was still some, a little bit of joint pain and things that I was still, um, experiencing. I had a fall where, uh, you know, on ice a number of years ago, and I, I still think I have a right knee that's probably going to have to have some, uh, scalpel time before it gets fixed. But, um, but every now and then, and just a little bit of tendonitis, a little bit of things would, would occasionally flare up and things like that. So I thought, well, let's, let's eliminate even more than that. So that was one of the area, kind of the incentive that, that pushed me that way as far as from the health side. The other, the other thing I think I've noticed over the last year or so is obviously the food industry has just hijacked, you know, the word keto uh, to no end. And yeah. I, I kind of got to the point where if the food I'm eating has an ingredient list, I don't want to eat it, you know, uh, besides, you know, obviously bacon sometimes can bite you, but you know, everything else, you don't need an ingredients list for a, for a ribeye, you know, <laughs> you know, cow, that's it, you know? So, um, and, and so as we started doing that, I, um, you know, I think the joint pain, the tendonitis, the things like that even started to get a little better. And, and for me, just, you know, it's so much easier. You know, we really tried to avoid and get away from all the keto snacks and the prepared stuff because you just didn't know, you know, where a lot of these companies were coming from. You know, it's easy to put a put the word keto on the box and and have people buy into it. And I was always I'm skeptical of pretty much everything. So 
So for me, you know, it just didn't seem to be the best way to go. And, and so for me, it's actually easier, you know, carnivore is so much easier to navigate than keto um, at this point anyway. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's stupid. So we'll just eat a bunch of meat. And don't worry about it. I mean, that, that, that is <laughs> right. one of the, one of the appeals that a lot of people find that it, instead of, you know, cobbling together recipes and worrying about your macronutrient ratios and, you know, I mean, so there, there's a benefit to that. Um, so gout is, when's the last time you had a gout, gout attack? Oh boy. Um, maybe a couple of years. Okay. I don't know. Maybe, maybe even longer than that. I mean, it's, it's been quite a while. Yeah. It's interesting. Cause you know, the, the, we're traditionally told red meat causes gout and you know, you're somebody who has a history of gout and presumably you're eating a bunch of red meat now and no gout flakes, <laughs> right? Is that fair to say? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So you, cause you have the, you know, my, in my perspective, gout is, is it kind of goes along with metabolic disease, metabolic syndrome, particularly we see a lot of people that have that. So I think it's a whole spectrum of things. And, uh, um, you know, I've seen a lot of people go on carnivore and their gout goes away, particularly as they lose a weight, as they, you know, get more healthy metabolically. Um, blood pressure, are you still on meds or are you off the meds now? No, actually, we had to start trimming them back. Um, I'm probably at the point where we may need to go to the next level of just getting entirely off of them. Mm -hmm. uh, we backed it off to 50%. I'd gotten to the point where every now and then I'd stand up and, you know, be a little dizzy. And yeah. so I said, you know, uh, the next visit to the doctor, I said, I need to, we may need to talk about, re you know, reversing some of that. So when he took the blood pressure and I, I would take it at home, I don't do a lot of testing. I don't do a lot of keto testing, mm -hmm. blood testing and things like that. I, every once in a while, if I'm feeling a little funky, I might test something, a couple of things just to make sure nothing's going out of whack. But, you know, my blood pressure, the diastolic number was, you know, 59 to 60, 61. And, yeah. And, uh, you know, so it's like, well, I don't need those meds anymore. No. Um, you know, and so we get off of that. Um, the, as far as the A1Cs and down to, you know, 4.8 or you know, 4, 8, 4, 9. Um, and I am still on that form, but I actually, I actually have a doctor's appointment on Monday. So I, I suspect we're going to try to get, get off of that too. I know there are a lot of, you know, people say, oh, there are other benefits to metformin, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Nothing, I think, is better than something if you don't need it. Yeah, I mean, there's side effects. But metformin has side effects as well. I mean, I know some people in the longevity, people were promoting that a while ago. But I think, you know, GI side effects, it has negative con con consequences to the mitochondria in some regards. And so, yeah, I mean, if you can get off meds, that's that's great. You know, and then, you know, plus it's, you don't have the hassle and expense of taking them as well. So, if I do my math right, you said you're down 140, so you're you're in the mm -hmm. 250s ish somewhere. Yeah, yeah, about 250. Yeah, around 250. Yeah, plus or minus depending on the day. Yeah, so we're about the same. I'm, I'm I think I, I was 255 this morning. I'm, I'm I'm in a little little bit of a weight loss phase right now. Where I'm kind of leaning out a little bit. But how much you eat in a day? What do you what do you, what does it take to get you get you full? One meal a day generally, mm -hmm. and it's not on necessarily on purpose. I'm usually busy through the day just the timing of work and all my other calls that I have to go on is just not a convenient time to eat. You know, I'm ribeye. I'm probably 80 to 90% beef. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'll, I'll do some chicken because my wife isn't quite the beef eater that I am a little bit of seafood, but, but for the most part, whether it's uh, I try to do two or three ribeyes or some kind of good steak, you know, every week. And, um, you know, some kind of ha like hamburger steak or something, mm -hmm. a little cheaper or whatever, the three or four other days, maybe one day a week we'll have a, you know, something that's not beef, but that's generally it. Uh, I do eat eggs. I'll, you know, steak and eggs or something like that. Um, one, you know, I don't eat as much bacon. I've even found that sometimes, sometimes pork will, will just tend to make my joints and stuff you know, be a little achier than what they normally are. Um, I, it's not a, it's not a dramatic change like it was, you know, eating some of the other stuff, but, um, so, so that kind of leads me to the, well, maybe there's something with the pork that, that my body just doesn't like. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly some people do have to struggle with pork for, for various reasons. And, and, you know, that's, you know, it is what it is, but so one meal a day, what do you think about two pounds a day or something like that? Where are you, where do you think you fall? If, if there's anything that I probably don't do 
well enough. It's, it's getting enough. Mm -hmm. I, I would say definitely at least a pound of okay. beef a day. Okay. Um, but you know, and then if my wife didn't finish her ribeye, you know, that turns into one and a half pounds and okay. you know, whatever. Okay. So, and, and then eggs along that and that too. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. So that, not, and that's enough to keep you full. That's, that's, that's great. Do you have a, mm -hmm. are you still like, you know, weight loss phase? Are you still trying to lose weight? Are you, were you, are you happy where you're at or where, what's going on? I actually, well, I'm, unlike you, I'm pretty lean. Mm -hmm. Um, I, like I said, I was always been thin and playing basketball in my day. The only, you know, weight machine we ever used was a thing called a leaper mm -hmm. yeah, because yeah. every high school kid wants to be able to dunk the basketball. Yep, that's yep. it. You know? And that was it. My upper body was just as, you know, skinny and lean as I could be. And then being a distance runner, that really mm -hmm. kind of just compounded that. In fact, when I raced hydroplanes, my dad would make fun of me. He said, when I stood sideways and smiled real big, I looked like a rake. <laughs> so it was, you know, because I had no, I have no meat on my body where, so, so for me, um, losing another 50 to 60 pounds isn't mm -hmm. necessarily out of the question. Now, mm -hmm. if, if my body composition and, you know, uh, my, uh, muscle mass changes, you know, I'm really not going to set it so much on a number. Um, if my body levels out at 220 or whatever, mm -hmm. um, and, and then as I build muscle, it kind of rises a little bit, kind of like you, you've seen with yourself, then that's where it's going to be. You know, I'll I'll take what it gives me. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I remember the I remember the old leaper machines. We did that in high school basketball, trying to get up there. Yeah. And yeah, I remember the first time I dunked the ball. I think it was I remember, fifteen or sixteen <laughs> or something like that. But you said you had some anxiety before. You know, maybe because you're you know at four hundred pounds, you know, you know, hell, you can drop dead tomorrow or something like that. <laughs> Has a diet impacted your 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 mental focus, your cognition, your mood, any anxiety? How's how's that work for you? Yeah, I think day to day, it definitely has. Um, I think just the day to day stresses. I, I do struggle a little bit with social anxiety, extreme social anxiety. If I'm speaking in front of a large crowd or, you know, I also play guitar and sing in front of people as part of our worship team at church. Um, so, you know, some of that may it may get to me a little bit more. I, I guess that's probably not so much a health issue as more just a, a, a little bit of a phobia, of, you know, that hasn't really gone away. But the biggest thing is the day to day anxiety, just the exposure to daily stresses, whether it's work related, family related, whatever. I think I'm a lot more even keel than I was. You know, I, I think as far as my mental focus, it's been a lot better. Um, I think it's probably because, you know, when you don't have all those other physical ailments, you know, kind of sticking their knives into you, you don't have that to worry about. You don't have that drawing your attention away from what you're trying to be focused on. And and, and then along with just the diet itself, I um, it, it's a lot easier for me to to hone in on what I'm doing and, and not be distracted by all that other stuff. Yeah. Um, do you... Um... So, I mean, obviously going from 400 pounds to, you know, losing 140 pounds, somebody had to notice that. I mean, I mean, you see the church, I mean, were people at church and stuff like that? And like, Hey, what the heck's going on here? Did they, did they ask what you're doing or did you get any commentary on what, what's going on with that? Yeah. Some, uh, you know, some, some are positive. Some were scared to death that I was going to die any day because I got too skinny, but uh, you know, they, they saw me, during my heavy years, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so being young, even into my, you know, mid thirties, they wouldn't have thought anything about it, but, you know, and then there were some that if, if um, I've always tried to not be too dogmatic about sharing what I do, because it depends on your audience. Sometimes there it's well received and other times, you know, they've heard just enough about it to, you know, not want to hear about it. And they're scared to death that you're going to kill yourself. So so, you know, but when they ask questions, I, I also give them the truth too. So I've had some people, um, you know, kind of try it, give it a try. My oldest son uh, played football through college. Mm -hmm. And so he's kind of seen the same sort of thing I did where his way, he's uh, kind of have his, a desk job as well. So for him, he's starting to see, even though he's, uh, you know, 38, 39 years old, he's starting to see that now. So he's giving, you know, keto carnivore a, a try periodically. And I think he's probably, he, he understands the successes of it because he's also, 
um, he's, he's a lifter. He's, he's does a lot, you know, that he picked that up uh, through football and in college. So he still tries to do that a lot, but so, you know, th there have been a few family members that have given it a try. Um, they're probably more scared of any kind of fasting regimen than they are the food. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. I like, I, I, I like eating regular food in me for sure. But, uh, and, right. and then, um, as far as, uh, you know, uh, blood pressure's come down, you know, your weight, weight's come down, gout's gone away, mental health is better. Um, digestive health, any, any positive negatives with that? Yeah, I, I haven't really had too many negatives uh, in that respect. I, I, I do have a little bit of problems with, uh, you know, some of the sugar substitutes, you know, whether it's erythritol or some of those other ones. And so, that's another thing that being more carnivore kind of takes away, you know, and now that I've kind of gone away from that, I really don't have many issues at all when it comes to digestive health. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people notice it just gets better when, you know, that means for some reason, some people just don't do well with all the plant fibers in the diet and it mm -hmm. kind of, kind of messes them up. Yeah. You'd mentioned, you know, all the, you know, the, the, the unfortunate thing is, you know, there's all this keto junk food out there now. I mean, you know, you go through a grocery store and it's, you know, it's a bunch of garbage basically. And, and it's hard to do that on carnivore. I mean, I, there's people that are trying to make them make it into the carnivore, carnivore space, but it's usually with jerkies and, you know, things like that, mm -hmm. which tend to be relatively free of, free of garbage. Although some of the jerkies can be kind of, kind of got some garbage in there, but, um, do you find that um, your app, you said you only feel like you eat once a day. I mean, how did that compare to the low fat days? I mean, when on a low fat days, were you like just a lot hungrier and eat more? Oh, yeah. I mean, those were the days of the, you know, you got to eat six meals a day and two or three snacks. And, and I come to realize that part of the reason why they wanted you to do that is because your uh, satiety, you know, only lasted about an hour to you know an hour and a half and you were you know your blood sugar was crashing again and you were you know you needed to eat something else yeah it's 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 definitely a big difference you know with with carnivore for sure um but back then yeah it was and, and not only that since i wasn't really focused on my health and what i was eating you know being an office worker you know, every other day it was somebody's birthday or anniversary. So, you know, it was, it was kind of hard to, but yeah, my appetite was always, I, I could sit in front of the TV and do away with a bag of chips. I wasn't so much a sweet eater at any, at any point in my life. I was more of the savory, you know, crunchy chip guy. Mm -hmm. A lot of people figure out, you know, how do you, how do I do that on keto or carnivore? Do you still have that sort of tendency where you want savory i mean obviously steak is going to be fairly savory but i mean you do any other kind of snacks um if we're doing any kind of snacks you know we'll get we have chomps pork rinds that are clean not really much else i i really don't have that uh compulsion to to snack uh very much i think we kind of focus on the fact that when when we do eat our meal in the evening we're we're going to eat a real meal you know we're not and I think generally that just that just does what it needs to do to keep us happy till the following day. Yeah, fair enough. And and your wife, I mean, when you first went on the diet, was she concerned about it, or did she like just totally all in on this? And and is she still kind of? I mean, obviously she's still with you and <laughs> supportive. Yeah. And and that's I'm saying is how did that go? Uh, well, she's she's not quite the the beef eater that I am, but she's always been supportive uh, from day one. Uh, you know, because she she was overweight too, so um, and she's she's lost a fair amount of weight as well and been successful. But she's you know she uh, enjoys more the the chicken and the pork, and it doesn't seem to bother her much. She'll have a, a salad with some Primal Kitchen you know dressings and things like that. So she's probably more whole foods, clean or carn uh, keto than carnivore but uh you know i i do most of the cooking in the house so i don't have a problem with you know cooking her meal and cooking my meal and uh, keeps me busy and it's keeping us both you know on the road to health so it's all good 
Yeah, yeah, it's like me. I do all the cooking in the house, and so I'm, I make a lot of steaks for everybody all the time. There, um, there's some people that you know really sort of emphasize fat in the diet, and whereas other people are more protein centric. Like myself, I tend to be. I tend to like. I'm a little more protein heavy than some other folks. How do you how do you manage it, or do you care? Are you just kind of like whatever I feel like? Well, that that's been uh, I've gotten some of that information, you know, from Dr. Westman and Dr. Barry, and some of that where they tend to, you know, you don't you shouldn't need to add all that fat, you know, unnecessarily if you're eating a good fatty ribeye or a good fatty cut of meat. You, you know, you're getting most of it naturally um, to artificially, you know, or just to add it to be adding it. I think the choice cuts of the cuts of meat that I choose, you know, are, are fattier cuts of meat. I don't, I don't try to get anything very lean ribeyes kind of, you know, they got enough fat on them and things like that. I've never been one, even in the keto time, there was a lot of push to, you know, add MCT oils and different things to coffees. You know, I'm a black coffee um, drinker. We did switch to some decaf just because, like you said, I just, the, the twitches and jerks and things you get from caffeine sometimes, but I, you know, I haven't abandoned coffee altogether. Um, but I've never been one to do the the bulletproof coffees and any of that. I just, I, I, I guess an old bit of advice that I got years ago was you don't want to drink your calories. Mm-hmm. And uh, so to me, it just seemed like you take a cup of coffee and add two or 300 calories to it. Didn't seem to be, I'd rather eat 300 calories worth of steak than, you know, 300 calories worth of coffee. <laughs> so. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. And there are a lot of people that, um, you know, often do that out of habit. They just kind of consume all these, you know, calories and then they wonder why the weight loss is stalling. And sometimes it helps in the transition period. But yeah, I often say for people losing weight, you know, drinking calories just doesn't make sense because it's it's so much easier to to over consume them. There's not much satiety that goes with that. So how about things like electrolytes, salt? Are you a someone who salts your food or do you do you pay much attention to that? Yeah, I, I don't shy away from uh seasoning the food. I don't, you know, do a lot of seasoning but you know salt and pepper things like that if i'm doing uh you know a couple day fast if you know if i'm not eating uh, we we will use element um just to supplement just to make sure especially if i feel like maybe i'm getting a little bit of a headache you know or something and maybe um you know i'll i'll drink an element just to make sure uh, but most of the time we really you know, we really don't have too many of those problems. We'll just kind of ward them off, you know, at first. If we're, if we're doing a prolonged fast of 48 hours, I don't think at this point with carnivore, I really don't feel like I need to do long-term fast. Um, you know, if I go a couple of days, if I'm not hungry and I skip a, an evening's meal, well, there's 48 hours basically um, to the next day. And, and that's generally about all we're doing now at this point. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, you mentioned, you know, in the past you were a distance runner and and, I mean, are you looking to start any of that stuff back up? Are you thinking about training or, you know, early on, obviously it's probably the same story here. You know, when, when you're almost 400 pounds, Mm -hmm. you're not going to go out and do a 5k, you know, (laughs) I mean, going up the stairs was, you know, I felt like I deserved a medal for doing that the first of this year. And I'm sure you'll be, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. We got a a Z-Bex rower. So really a good kind of a commercial grade, nice, uh, nice rowing machine that we've been, we've been hitting. So, and, and that's part of the reason why I chose that was I thought it gave a good upper and lower body. And with all, if I do still have some, you know, some injury to my right knee that, you know, I can do that without the impact and still build some muscle mass and, you know, throughout the whole, whole system. So we are doing that now. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people when they're significantly, you know, overweight or they have a lot of health issues, you know, they, they just can't exercise. I mean, there's just one of those things where you got to get the diet under control first, and maybe maybe they can avoid some sedentary behavior and go for walking. But beyond that, it's right. it's too painful to 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 realistically or even unsafe. You know, I mean, you know, to go like you said, going out and running five k at four hundred pounds <laughs> very easily injure yourself yeah. with that with yeah that you're a ground pounder at that point yeah I, I yeah and i play golf mm-hmm. um if you ask my son's 
they, I don't know that they'd call me a, a golfer, but I do play golf, uh, you know, but, um, and so for that, uh, and my wife's getting some clubs too. So that's something we can do together. And it's one of those, it's not high intensity, but you're certainly getting out there and you're not sitting on the couch. Yeah. I mean, if you're walking, if you walk the course, I mean, if you're, if you're, you yeah, know, you have to carry your own bags and all that. So I mean, most people right. do that. Most people are on the carts these days, but yeah, you can get a little bit of exercise out there. At least it's outside in the sunshine. I don't know if you have a, are you, cause you said you're, you were in it, a lot of computer work over mm -hmm. the years. Do you have a, a, a routine today where you just kind of, because it's still sitting down a lot. I mean, do you get up a lot? Do you go for walks or how do you, how do you manage the day? Yeah, I, uh, actually I saw a question come in. I do, when I do fast, um, I, I do have some coffee. So to answer that question, you know, I, I, I work from home, you know, we've, we actually, our organization, migrated to work from home full time mm -hmm. uh through the whole covid situation and we've never really gotten back to you know doing anything other than that um being around home and now my wife she actually works in the, the health industry as well as a medical billing professional so she, she actually works out of the home but for me i i try to make it a point to get you know up and around as much as i can i i still i think a lower back issue, things like that, just from sitting all the time. So for me, uh, I don't have a stand up desk at home. Um, but, uh, I try to make it a point to I'm, I'm up at least once every hour, if nothing else to get a refill of, you know, coffee or drink or whatever, you know, it's something, something just to get me moving a little bit. Do you have any kind of social media contacts or anything like that? Do you get on social media and talk about some of this stuff or no? So our, first event that we actually went to we went last fall we went to keto palooza um in louisville and that's uh had the two crazy ketos and dr barry was there and benazadi um I'm trying to think i'm probably missing somebody and i don't want to insult anybody but um a lot of good information i, I try to you know I try to be careful all the because a lot of these groups especially now the scent they tend to focus on all the keto treats you can make with coconut flour and you know, and i really uh we just really haven't gotten into that we just kind of avoided it but as far as just being in in an event uh you know where everybody's like-minded even if it's keto even if it's whatever it, it's nice to know you're not uh you know on the island by yourself yeah for sure yeah there's a lot of a lot of a lot of people with with uh that have been doing this stuff. I mean, you know, and, and it's nice to have some support and even within the carnivore community, as it continues to grow and grow every, every day, we get more and more people that end up doing this stuff. How does uh, a lot of people will say, Hey, uh, you know, a carnivore diet, maybe it sounds good, but it's cost prohibitive. What, what has been your experience with that? I mean, compared to like a regular diet, how does, how does that go for you? Yeah, I, <laughs> I think people are, fooling themselves uh into thinking that it's cheaper to eat junk i mean you between the fast food and the carry out and all the prepared foods and then the fact that you're hungry a lot more often you're obviously eating one meal a day you know we're not paying for three meals a day we're paying for one you know if i take that money we're saving on one meal a day and invest in a little bit better steaks and a little bit better that as far as the grocery bill goes like i said we're we're buying seven meals a week instead of, you know, 21, <laughs> you know, and all the snacks too, you know, so, so as cost wise, even with the price of beef and things like that, you know, I, I know a lot, a lot of folks don't do the grass fed. I, I tend, we tend to do the grass fed grass finished uh, if we're getting ground beef, you know, but when it comes to a steak, if it's available, you know, and we can find it great. Otherwise we'll stick to the, you know, prime cuts. I have a relative that said they've tried the grass fed, grass finished, and they said they don't like it. So I don't know if that's just something that they have in their mind when they're eating it. I've never really noticed that much difference. And as far as my results and as far as how I feel, I've never noticed much of a difference. Um, obviously, I guess the worst, the worst cut of ribeye is still better than, you know, pretty much anything else. Particularly if you're only one meal a day. I use typically two, but I mean, you know, but it's, you know, less, less prep time, less cleanup time. You know, I mean, everything gets cheaper. I mean, cause you're not, you know, you're not running the dishwasher as much. You're not, you know, you're not running the stove as much. You know, you're, you're just, for many people, they, they notice it. It's either certainly equal or often, often cheaper for sure. 
Any downsides to, to either keto carnivore, ketovore? I mean, what, have you had any major negatives that have come out of this? Well, family gatherings can be a challenge, you know, especially if the entire family isn't doing it. I have relatives that aren't focused on doing anything like this or anything mm-hmm. similar. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, coming through the holidays and things like that, it's it's it can be a little difficult. We've, I think my family uh, in the past, you know, most of our social activities always kind of been centered around, you know, whether they were carrions. I mean, I'm, I'm living in the upper Midwest in Amish country. So every gathering you have, you have a big carry in of all kinds of casseroles and, you know, things like that. So, you know, kind of picking your battles and just, uh, you know, either taking stuff from our, for ourselves, you know, to eat. So the downside there, I guess, is to say, you have to kind of account for yourself at these gatherings and take something that you know you're going to be able to eat or just, uh, you know, just grab an unsweetened iced tea and walk around and chat a lot. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. I mean, you can just, you know, I, a lot of times I'll go to, you know, if I, if I go to an event and I don't know what the food's going to be, I may just eat ahead of time. Just, you know, so I'm, you know, if there's something there I like, I'll, do that if not, you know, or bring something, bring something my own that I know that's that's good. And a lot of times that everybody else likes it too. If you bring in a bunch of meat, you know, as a dish, right. everybody else is going to want to eat that primarily a lot of times. So, anything else that, that you'd like to mention uh, on on this deal? Uh, well, I think I think the the fact. I'm a little bit older than you. I, I just turned 60 in December. Mm-hmm. Um, I think sometimes, you know, people think, well, gee, I've been big for so long, um, you know, and, and I've ate this way for so long, uh, you know, how much of an effect is it really going to have for somebody who's 60 years old or whatever to to start doing the right thing? And and that's just, uh, you know, based on the results and based on how you feel, you never know how bad you felt until you start feeling good. 60 years old is is plenty young to to make the change. In fact, I know listening to Dr. Barry, and I think I'm sure you've had some guests too that are a lot older than me, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that have made the change and, and are seeing nothing but positives. And I think that would be the biggest thing is just to encourage people that, it absolutely doesn't matter whether you're 50 years old, 60 or 75. It's, you know, you're going to see the benefits. I mean, a lot of these benefits that I saw, um, you know, we saw in a pretty short amount of time. It wasn't like it took six months or a year of effort to see those results. We saw, we started seeing results, you know, week, two weeks, one month, 60 days into, into making the change. So it's never too late. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I have seen, I've seen people well into their eighties, you know, go on, make, make dietary changes and, and have dramatic improvement in their health. And so thanks for, thanks for mentioning that. Um, is there any sort of, like you said, I don't know, do you have a social media you want to let people know if somebody wants to find, follow you or find more information about what's going on with you, follow your journey? Well, I, you know, I started, I try, I started a YouTube channel, um, and, uh, I, I put about a half a dozen videos on there and, you know, working in the IT industry professionally, when I get home or uh, I, it's really hard for me to get in front of a laptop again, yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, so, and it's a lot of work, you know, I, I certainly, I think that's why I was interested in doing this. If, if I can um, give some information and some encouragement to people when I have the opportunity, whether it's something like this, whether it's an event that I go to, a keto or carnivore event, something like that, and just share that. And obviously share with family and friends and people I come into contact with. That's probably the best, uh, you know, but it's it's old guy keto. Mm-hmm. It's, it's If you really want to get a chuckle to see how YouTube videos should not be made, <laughs> that you should bookmark that one that's that's uh that would be it would be worth a chuckle and it's called old guy keto is that what it's called yeah old guy keto Very see nice. now i gotta i have to go off and delete all of them before anybody gets a chance to see them <laughs> well good for you <laughs> thanks thanks for doing this craig i appreciate it yeah all right guys uh we'll be back tomorrow uh no guests tomorrow it's a weekend so if you just have your questions we'll be there tomorrow morning all right thank you so much craig bye everybody. all right Take right care. thank you see you guys Hey folks, it's Dr. Sean Baker here. If you guys are enjoying these success stories, well, you can become your own success story. You can do that by heading over to carnivore.diet. 
can sign up for a free 30-day trial and get started today. We're looking forward to supporting you. Our community is wonderful, and we'd love to see your success.